Hello everyone, People Boy one here. So, here on the living room floor, I have a old flat screen TV. Picked this up off the curb for free. And it does work, but it has one very obvious problem. See, it's in standby right now. Turn it on. And you can immediately hear what the problem is. So you see, we have a picture. Give it a second. Okay, so um, there was a picture, but now it's just doing this. So what's happening with this TV that makes it sound like the gates of hell have opened up inside of it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. And you see, now it's in standby noise is gone. So what is causing the noise? Well, quite simply, the SMPS inside the TV is going out. That's a switch mode power supply. In all likelihood what has happened is we've had some capacitors fail within that power supply and therefore the switch mode power supply is not able to operate properly and we get that screeching noise uh, which varies depending on the amount of load put on it which is why in standby it makes almost no noise at all, even though it is still operating. But as soon as we turn it on, you know, it starts screaming bloody murder. So if we pop this TV open and take a look at the power supply, we should be able to find some bad capacitors. Okay, the back panel is off. Now right here at the top is our power supply board. And just as I suspected, we have capacitor problems. And I don't even have to do any uh, electronic testing to tell that. So if you look at these two capacitors in the middle, you'll notice that on each one of them, it looks like there's something leaking out uh, around the leg of the capacitors. And then this one, especially, is actually bulging out at the top. So that's a surefire sign that these capacitors have failed. And then this one right here is also bulging a bit. The rest of them, I don't see any physical signs of failure, but those probably aren't doing so well either. Um, these capacitors are all some knockoff brand. These ones say uh, Suncon on them, which is really just no good. Um, a good brand capacitor would be something like Nichicon or Panasonic. Uh, so these are probably just all uh, junky capacitors on here. Now the proper way to repair this would be to just recap this whole board, new capacitors all the way around. But I'm not looking to do that right now, so instead I'm going to look at my parts bin and see if I've got some capacitors that I can replace these three with and see if that solves the problem. So I was able to find a replacement for this smaller capacitor. We've got a nice Nichicon in there now. Unfortunately, these larger filter capacitors they seem to be kind of an oddball size. They're 100 UF 450 volts. I don't really have anything that's that low of a capacitance, but that high of a voltage rating. So unfortunately, I had to actually buy some. So I've got two new Nichicons here. These are the same rating. Set me back about seven bucks, so not too bad. So we'll throw these in. We should be good to go. All right, so all the new capacitors are in. I did go through and test all these other capacitors with my ESR meter just to make sure. And I did find one other one that was bad, which was this one right here. So I went ahead and put a new one in there. So let's go ahead and put it back in the TV, see if it works. So the board's in, turn on the power strip, see what happens. Well, it's not on fire. That's a good sign. We have a standby light. See if it powers on. Oh, we have power. No screeching. 
and we have picture so I wanted to make sure the picture was good so I think the camera is picking up some kind of flicker over here I assure you it does not look that way in real life in real life it is perfectly solid that's just something with the camera see if this will let me scroll through nope it will not my media player is acting up a bit oh there it goes so those are convergence lines more convergence lines we got red green blue so everything appears to be in working order there is the slightest amount of wine coming from the power supply but nothing that I would consider out of the ordinary so yeah I now have a perfectly functional TV for the grand total of seven dollars so hopefully you found this interesting if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them down below